My name is Declan Mhaiki. I'm the Deputy Managing Director for Transmission for an electric power utility in Tanzania known as Tanesco. I will stand up here. I think it, um, the chairman spoke down there, but I feel high and mighty up here. So I think it's better to present from here. Uh, my presentation today is about the case study on the opportunities provided by the Tanzanian Backbone Transmission Investment Program. I don't know which way should I point. Okay, it seems to work. Uh, first, I will start by just a map of Tanzania for some of you who might not be aware of uh, where Tanzania is exactly. We're in the eastern East Africa. Uh, on the east side, we have the Indian Ocean and we have uh, eight countries that uh, are our neighbors. In the north, there is Kenya, Uganda, in the northwest, Rwanda and Burundi. West side, there is Democratic Republic of Congo. Southwest, there is Zambia and Malawi. And in the south, there is Mozambique. Uh, a few geographical information about the country. The country is fairly large. It's almost a million square kilometers. And we have the, one of the highest mountains in Africa. Actually, it is the highest, Mount Kilimanjaro, with the highest elevation of 5,895 meters above sea levels. So when you have your holidays, you're most welcome and climb the peak there. We also have one of the deepest lakes in Africa. That is the Lake Tanganyika. It has, uh, the deepest point is at 773 meters below sea level. Uh, people of Tanzania and its economy. Population uh, is 44.9 million people. That is according to the last census, does, census which was done in 2012. And, uh, but 80% of the population lives in the rural area. Our national language is Kiswahili, but English is widely spoken and is actually also an official language in Tanzania. Uh, in terms of our GDP, which is actually stands at about uh, the last estimate is about 73.5 billion US dollars, and 27% of that is uh, agriculture. 80%, although uh, it employs 80% of the workforce, as I said earlier, 80% of the population lives in the rural area, and their main occupation is agriculture. Industry, we have light processing industry, which account to 24% of the GDP, and the remainder, almost 49%, is uh, uh, different services. We are rich in minerals in terms of diamond, tanzanite, gold, gemstone, and uh, recently we've started mining uranium. The energy sector in Tanzania, it is under the Ministry of uh, Energy and Minerals. And my company, Tanesco, uh, is 100% owned by the state. It's a public uh, corporation. Uh, we fall under the Ministry of Energy and Minerals. And uh, we supply, a main responsibility to supply uh, power to the whole of uh, mainland Tanzania, except for Zanzibar, where there is a separate utility. But we sell bulk power to, to the utility. Uh, so, the monopoly we still have in transmission and distribution, but in generation is open and we have a number of IPP that also produce power. Access to electricity is still low, 18.4%, so there is 81.6% uh, of population that we still need to reach, which means a lot of investment is required. <laughs> Uh, a little bit more information about the uh, Tanesco profile. It's, uh, again, a parastatal public corporation, which was uh, incorporated in the company acts in 1968. And I said earlier, our core business is mainly that we do generation transmission and distribution and sell bulk power to the island of Zanzibar. Install capacity. At the moment, is 1,438 megawatts, of which 40% is gas, 41% is hydro. 
in 19% is, is uh, uh, thermal generation from liquid fuel power plants. Though installed capacity, uh, hydro is 41%, but this is prone to hydrology. So sometimes not all of it is available. Uh, I thought I'd just also give you a few facts about the energy sources in Tanzania and the potentials that we have. Uh, hydro is the, what actually has been predominantly used in Tanzania up to about uh, 1998. Our energy source for electricity was at about 95% from hydro. But due to uh, weather changes, global warming and so on, then the reliability of hydro has been in question. So we've actually been investing more in thermal. The potential for hydro is 4,700 megawatts, though we've only installed 561 megawatts. We also have natural gas, and the potential, according to the most recent discovery, is 33 TCF, and this number keeps on growing every day. So there is quite a large potential, and we've only installed about 501 megawatts installed in uh, gas fire generation, and at the moment, we have uh, 340 megawatts that we're developing. But the plan is by uh, 2016 to have about 1,000 megawatts from gas, from new projects. We have geothermal potential. Uh, we've not done much in geothermal, really, because uh, we've been mostly using hydro and gas for generation. But we are currently carrying out investigation uh, this potential might actually be higher than that because the work done on geothermal is very little. So hopefully we should prove some more capacity in the near future. Coal, we have 1,200 million tons of coal and it's also very little explored. Uh, at the moment we only have 10 megawatts of generation from coal. And right now we are developing 200 megawatts in the southern part of Tanzania. But there are other plans as well. In this. Most of the coal deposits are in the southwestern area of Tanzania. So there are projects now going on in Chuchuma and in the Mbea area where actually coal generation is going to grow up quite significantly. Solar, we have quite good uh, radiation in the range of 4 to 7 kilowatt hour per square meter. And again, very little of it has been developed. We only have about 1.5 megawatts. And mostly it is in the rural areas for small-scale uh, utilization, lighting and dispensaries and so on, some schools. So there is a potential there. Obviously, the main problem in developing has been cost, uh, since solar is quite expensive compared to the other alternative that we have. Uh, wind, we also have good wind speed in parts of the country. And at the moment, we are working with uh, two IPPs, each about 100 megawatt to be developed. And in future, we're looking forward to develop even more. Biomass is a large country, as I said, 1 million square kilometers with uh, 44 million people. So the forest area, the vegetation is quite large. But there are a number of uh, plants that are running. Uh, cogeneration, a lot of sugarcane uh, farm plantations they make and uh, some from wood which they cut up and steam put up in boilers. About 35 megawatts that is put into the grid at the moment and lots of other small biomass plants that are used. Performance of the electric sector in Tanzania, as I said earlier, I installed capacity of hydro is 561 and the available is 551 that is machine capacity we only have about uh, 10 megawatt that is out uh, being defective the rest works but then again it depends on hydrology hydrological condition which will determine how much will be available at each particular time thermo as you can see has grown up significantly over the years uh, as you look at 2005, hydro was higher. Now thermo is higher than hydro. And that's because of the hydrological uh, 
problems we've had, the droughts, which have been prolonging all the time. Uh, it's in terms of uh, installed capacity of uh, the generation, as I said, we have IPP, and at the moment you can see public uh, ownership of generation is 57%, and private is 43 so there is uh, quite a number of private operators there, and you are most welcome, some of you, if you are interested, to come to Tanzania. Our peak is, by end of 2012, was 5, 851. Uh, transmission lines, in terms of trans transmission and distribution line, total length is now 55,841. The biggest portion is distribution. Transmission is only about uh, 4,800 kilometers. Customers, we have about a million customers at the moment, and the electrification, as Elia said, is 18.4%. Our transmission grid, uh, our first major transmission line was constructed in 1964, which was a uh, 132 kV transmission line from Dar es Salaam, this red line, all the way up to Halle. That was the very first uh, transmission line. Over the years, due to the economical growth and the need to connect more people, then we continue extending the line on the 220 kV. First, the 132 was extended further north to Arusha, and then we started 220 kV first to Kidatu, then Iringa, then we went to the southwest Mbea, and eventually went up to the north, and linked also the system. We have a small ring here. Uh, currently, as I said the area we have a total of about uh, 4,800 kilometers of uh, transmission line. That is the existing grid. As you can see, there are vast areas of the countries that are not connected to the grid, and this is an opportunity for for growing the sector so that we can reach the remaining 80, almost 82 percent of the population. Uh, here I'm talking about some of the drivers for transmission uh, grid expansion in Tanzania. As I said, we started in 1964, we've been growing and we still need to grow and some of the drivers are our uh, Tanzania Vision 2025 that has been formulated by the government, which is basically a long-term development plan that aims to make Tanzania a middle-income country by 2025. That is the, the vision. And it projects uh, an annual growth of 8% of the economy. Currently, we are around 6.5, but we are working hard to make sure that we, we reach that. And to have this kind of uh, economic growth, obviously, electricity needs to grow at an even higher rate than the, the, the economic growth. The current uh, rate has been about 8 to 10 percent, though the expectation is might go up to 12 percent, and meaning that by 2025, we should have uh, our MD from the current 800, and actually now it's about 855 to 6,700 megawatt by 2025. The national energy policy also plays a part in driving the grid expansion. It was formulated in 1992 by the Minister of Energy and Minerals. And uh, basically, it focuses on making the sector efficient. And uh, it looks at uh, the market mechanism, how to improve uh, so that the sector is efficient and also being aware that there is not much uh, public money to, to, to be able to do all the required investments. So the focus is also on public-private partnership in trying to grow the sector. And this uh, policy is backed by legislation, which uh, also covers uh, reg regulation in terms of uh, uh, the regulator as well is covered under this. The Electricity Act, which was enacted in 2008, also plays a part in driving uh, the growth. Basically, the Act removes, removed the monopoly from Tanesco. Tanesco was the sole utility. It did everything from generation, transmission, distribution. 
Now it has opened up to start with generation, but also uh, the, the act itself does provide for opening transmission and distribution as well. But this requires now the ministry to set the required regulation to ensure that uh, this is also uh, opened up. Transmission is always uh, a bit of a difficult case to handle in terms of opening it up. So the government needs to decide how they want to move. But generation, I'm sure, I mean distribution, soon it will be opened up. Other drivers is again the, the access to electricity, which is low. So we need to electrify more the country so more people get access to power. Our target is to reach 30% by 2015, and by 2025, actually, we should reach about 70%. So this calls for huge investments. This is a large country. The population is scattered around the country. So there is a requirement for a huge amount of investment. Regulation is another player in our a factor for the grid expansion. And uh, we have in place since 2005 an energy and water utilities regulator called EWURA, in short, that regulates the power sector. Their function is to safeguard all stakeholders' interests to ensure fair play, both the supplier and the consumers. Always a difficult role to balance, but uh, they are doing their best. So they also issue licenses and approve and enforce tariffs, including PPAs as well. Load growth is another driver of uh, uh, transmission grid expansion in Tanzania. And uh, you can see uh, we have a graph here showing from right 1990 to 2012 how the energy has been growing. Uh, initially, uh, it was a fairly low growth rate, but from 1997 it started increasing up quite rapidly uh, due to economical reforms that have been done. And uh, there have been a few dips in 2006 and 2011, and these are mostly attributed to drought, whereby we do not have adequate uh, supply to give the consumer, so it tends to suppress the demand. And obviously, our demand today, we say, is uh, 855, but that is also suppressed because only 18.4% of the population have access to power, and in certain times, it's not adequate. So that tends to limit uh, the growth as well. So in terms of our transmission grid expansion plan, due to all these factors that uh, uh, causes the, the, the expansion, we, we've been looking at uh, how to expand our system, and we have a, a power system master plan that actually looks at the generation and transmission expansion. And we have an aggressive expansion plan which will address uh, the power flow that uh, commensurate with the economical growth, the current and the expected in the future. So the plan is to construct a 400 kV backbone. Currently, our highest voltage in the system is 220 kV. We are planning to construct a 400 kV transmission grid backbone. Uh, and the idea is by 2031 to have uh, quite a large number of transmission lines constructed. 400 kV, we need uh, to address the growth, 447 kilometers of triple circuit lines, 1,961 of double circuit, and 2,235 of a single line seconds, as well as expanding the 220 kV by 300 kilometers and 556 for double second and single line respectively. The first step, obviously in any plan such so big, you need to start somewhere. So our very first project is a, what we call a backbone transmission investment project, which is a line from uh, a town called Iringa to Shinyanga, and this actually there is a, a map here which I can show. Uh, this is Tanzania, it's in the middle of uh, the country. Uh, 
most of the generation is located in the southern part of the country, but there's a lot of development in the northern side in terms of mining activity and agro-based industry. So we need to transfer the load. The current line, which is 220V, is overloaded. So our first project will be to build uh, this line to the north, which uh, takes care of the internal power flows in the country, but as well is part of the plan, as I can show you uh, up there. Uh, first step to interconnect to Kenya. This is the backbone project from this point to that point there. But this show an overview of the, all the different lines we need to make. The, the solid line is the existing grid that I'd shown earlier. But the backbone project is 400 kV, 670 km in this line. That is phase one. And then phase two will be building a line to Kenya, from uh, Singida to Arusha, Nairobi. And then we also build from Iringa to Mbea and connect to Zambia. So this line is designed not only to carry loads to the north side, but also uh, interconnection traffic through from the north to the south. Other plans, as I said, we have a lot of lines going up to the north. There is a southwest uh, uh, grid extension as well, covering all this area. We have a number of lines connecting new power stations in these areas that are planned. And also, this is our commercial city in Dar es Salaam, which actually is the biggest load center. And there's a lot of gas generation development in this area. So we will be also needing to reinforce our system both in the eastern part as well as linking the, the commercial city to the backbone uh, line, transmission line. Uh, as I said earlier, this is just to show a regional plan that whatever we are planning also matches the regional requirements of interconnection. This is Tanzania. We have a connection to Zambia. So this backbone actually is the beginning, which starts uh, from Iringa to Shinyanga here. But then will be expanded to Kenya, to Zambia, as well as connecting with uh, Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi. There is a Lake Victoria ring that is planned also to be done. So this slide is actually talks a lot about what I've uh, already explained in the diagram. Maybe just a little more information about the project itself. As I said, the 670 kilometer 400 double circuit transmission line. It will be a two bundled ACSR Blue J conductors used. Uh, phase one, though we are building at 200 kV, but the line at 400 can carry 2000 megawatts. But currently we do not need all that much power. so. Phase one will energize the line at 220 kV, and we have a capacity of about 1,000 megawatts. And later on, we'll have phase two, which we will upgrade the substation transformation to, up, to bring up the voltage level to, thank you, I will wrap up in a moment, to uh, 400 kV. So maybe this is my last slide. What are the opportunities that uh, the backroom project is presenting to Tanzania. There are a number of them. Obviously, I said earlier, provision of power delivery from south, part where all the generation is located to the north. Uh, it will bring improved power quality as the, in terms of voltage improvement as the current line is already overloaded. It will improve reliability of supply as in the design of taking care of the N minus one criteria. The losses will be reduced, particularly by removing the overload on the line. It also gives an opportunity to, to connect uh, the eastern and pa southern power pools. At the moment, we are member to both power pools, but we are non-operating members and we are not connected. And the economic benefits of energy deliveries uh, based on the Avoidance of energy not saved. Due to the overload, we are forced sometimes to load shed, and with this line, we have ample capacity to ensure that all the customers are saved with the required energy. 
In Kiswahili, we say asante sana, which means thank you.